two Google AdSense approvals for two websites in a single day, isn't that remarkable? In this video, you are not only going to learn my 12 secret tips and tricks to let Google AdSense approve your website easily, but you also have a chance to win my free Google AdSense approval service with some conditions. Here's a recap for everyone, I created an English website named Viriox, and a Japanese website named Oxoroxo on September 15th and September 23rd respectively. Both of them were Google Blogger websites, and they were approved by Google AdSense together on October 13th, 2021. You may watch back all previous 12 parts with 100% real screen recordings of what I have done, while this Google AdSense tutorial video is a summary of the whole process of how I managed to make Google AdSense approve these Blogger websites within 30 days since their creation. There will be numerous examples or references in this video using gaming and movie clips, including Pokemon games, Minecraft, and MasterChef etc. Some of you might not be able to understand every reference I made, but don't worry about that because there will be adequate explanations for you. For your information, sometimes I will use a thumbnail, colored circle emoji, and a digit together on every specific AdSense tutorial video or article I mentioned here, so you can find them easily on the appendix webpage using the link inside this video's description box. This introduction is a bit over time already, so let's dive in right now and learn how to get Google AdSense approval for your website in 2022. There are two websites tools you have to know before you start to write content on your website, they are Google Search Console and Google Analytics. Search Console tools and the reports help you measure your site's search traffic and performance, fix some indexing issues, and make your site appear in Google search results. Meanwhile, Google Analytics is a web analytics service offered by Google that tracks and reports website traffic. Therefore, both of them are necessary to help you get Google AdSense approval while you are developing your website. You are definitely required to set up a Search Console account for AdSense approval because you need to request Google to crawl and index your website and your blog posts through URL submission in Search Console. Besides, I strongly advised you to create a Google Analytics account too, even though it doesn't affect how Google AdSense to approve or reject your website. Recently I just found out that I didn't set up analytics for my Japanese blogger site named Oxoroxo, but Google AdSense still approved the site without any issue. In summary, Search Console is a must for Google AdSense approval. Setting up Google Analytics is not mandatory, but you still need to create it as soon as you completely set up your website. There are many YouTube tutorials that tell you to use custom website themes or templates to get Google AdSense approval for your website. To be honest, I have a different opinion with them. You shouldn't use custom website theme when Google AdSense is reviewing your website, especially if you are new to blogging. Let's take Blogger as an example, there are many websites provide custom, fancy, and free themes for everyone to download and apply to website easily. However, you may need more time to complete the setup of a custom website theme compared to the basic themes provided by Blogger platform, especially if you are new to blogging and haven't learned about CSS or HTML before. In addition, you have to fully understand the theme applied to your website and ensure that it is functioning properly, or else Google AdSense may reject your website's monetization request if you made some mistake in setting up the website theme. What surprised me is that there are even some YouTube videos that claim they provide the so-called best website theme or templates for Google AdSense approval. Don't ever believe what they said because there is no such thing at all. Imagine you are in a cooking competition and the website theme is your plate. You have to ensure there is neither dust nor crack on the plate before serving your food to the judge, who is also known as Google AdSense in this tutorial. No matter if your plate is made of ceramic, glass, steel, gold, or diamond, the judge decides with your food instead of the plate. What would the judge do if you present terrible food regardless of any plate you use? You know, these kind of dishes are what send you home. Listen here, Google AdSense doesn't even care about the website theme or templates you use at all. No matter if your website theme is free or premium, SEO friendly, ads friendly or not, Google AdSense will approve your website if once you fulfill all the requirements set by AdSense. Making sure your website is functioning properly with a good navigation to users are all you need to take care of when you want to use a website theme. Besides, using a simple website template is enough for you to get Google AdSense approval already. If you still don't believe me, both Viriox and Oxoroxo Blogger websites are still using the free template provided by Blogger until now. You may visit these websites and see if there are any Google ads showing on these websites if you want to prove me wrong. In conclusion, there is no such thing called the best website templates or themes for Google AdSense approval. You should use the simple but proper website template if you are new in blogging. Apart from that, you can change the website theme without any issue after Google AdSense approve your website. AdSense wouldn't stop you from showing their ads if there is any minor error in setting up a custom website theme. However, if this happens before Google AdSense approve your site, then AdSense is probably going to reject your website due to policy violations such as under construction issue or site behavior navigation issue. I will mention how to fix these policy violations in the later part of this video. That's the end of this chapter, so let's move on to the next chapter, writing important pages. 
After setting up the website theme, Google Search Console, and Google Analytics accounts, you can start to write a full set of important pages for your website. These important pages include About Me, Contact Me, Disclaimer, Privacy Policy, and Terms and Conditions. First, I will briefly talk about what you need to write in these pages, then I will provide a link for you to download these important pages templates and use them freely on your site. About Me page is where you introduce yourself or the purpose of your website. Make sure you make this page look like a simple resume by writing your academic records, achievements, qualifications, or working experience etc. in this page. In addition, don't write something worthless and fake like claiming your website will provide first-hand information or write I will dedicate to provide high-quality content in the About Me page. It is unnecessary and writing such things will only deteriorate your own credibility and trustworthiness. Therefore, you just need to be honest when you are writing the About Me page and keep it as simple as you can, while mentioning your experience or qualifications related to your content. Contact Me or Contact Us page is a channel for your visitors to ask a question or look for opinions from you. This page is essential to serve the user with the purpose of providing them with information on how they can get in touch with you. The other important pages such as Disclaimer protect your website against legal claims. Privacy policy page details how the information will be collected from visitors and applied by others. While terms and conditions page set up the rules and compliance required for visitors to follow when they view your website and its content. Even though these important pages play an important role in developing your website, they are not necessary for your website to be approved by Google AdSense. I know there are many online tutorials on YouTube that say you have to provide a full set of important pages or else Google AdSense will not approve your website. But one of my websites has few important pages that were not indexed by Google months ago, but Google AdSense still approved it. Moreover, there were even some websites that didn't provide any important pages, but still can get Google AdSense approval. Therefore, based on what I have observed, important pages might not be that essential in getting Google AdSense approval for your website. If you want to play it safe, you may use the link provided in the description box, or just watch part 3 of Blogger Google AdSense tutorial series, then copy and paste the important pages I showed inside these tutorials into your website. There is no problem using similar important pages as other websites, excluding About Me page, so feel free to take it as you like. I forgot to mention just now, there are two basic requirements if you want to monetize your WordPress or Blogger website with Google AdSense. First, the minimum age requirement to participate in Google AdSense is 18 years. Second, you need to have an active Gmail account that isn't linked to any Google AdSense account yet. But you don't really have to be 18 years old to be eligible to sign up for a Google AdSense account. Just make sure the birthday inside your Google account settings is set to make you become at least 18 years old, so there will be no age verification or any blockage when you create a Google AdSense account for Blogger or WordPress website. I'm not sure about the AdSense sign-up process for YouTube, but it should be the same. However, even though you don't have to be at least 18 years old to open a Google AdSense account, you still need to be at least 18 years old to receive income payment from Google AdSense. Therefore, if you are just a few months before your 18th birthday, maybe two or three months, then you may sign up for a Google AdSense account under your name. However, if you are still far away from being 18 years old, the best option to monetize your website or YouTube channel is to sign up for a Google AdSense account under your parents' or guardian's identity. Apart from applicants' age, there are many beginners in Google AdSense who might have some doubts about website age in their mind, such as how old my website has to be for Google AdSense to approve it, or is it true that a blog should be at least six months old for Google AdSense approval? You may find out many people are asking similar questions regarding website age across Google AdSense community and Quora, so indeed website age is one of the major doubts for Google AdSense approval in many beginners' minds. Under these questions, you can find there are different answers from these people. Someone said your website has to be at least three months old, some product experts even said your website needs to be active for over six months, so who should we believe? From my point of view, you don't have to worry about how website age is going to affect Google AdSense approval on your website. I will give you a clear explanation about this factor using some Google AdSense guidelines and my past experience. Few years ago, Google AdSense had set a website age restriction on any website that was set up in some regions. I managed to find this requirement recently, it was written like this, in some locations, including China and India, we require publishers to have owned their sites for six months. We've taken this step to ensure the quality of our advertising network and protect the interests of our advertisers and existing publishers. However, Google AdSense made some adjustment on this six months old requirement by removing it silently on eligibility requirements for AdSense page in around 2019 to 2020. Therefore, there is no website age requirement anymore according to Google AdSense. Since then, all websites in most of the countries or regions in the world are eligible to apply for Google AdSense now, whether the website is newly created or well-developed for months or years. In part 12 of this Google AdSense tutorial series, you can see most of my blogger websites were approved by Google AdSense when they were around one month old. 
Oxoroxo, the Japanese blogging website with educational and financial content, is my fastest website to be approved by Google AdSense since its creation. The whole process took me 22 days and 5 hours only, which means this blogger website was not even one month old yet when Google AdSense approved it. So based on my real-life examples, website age is not one of the factors to let Google AdSense approve a website anymore in most of the countries and regions around the world, so you don't have to bother it anymore in your mind. You are eligible to get Google AdSense approval for any website once it is created. But stop here first, it doesn't mean that Google AdSense is definitely going to approve a newly created website. Next thing you have to do to get Google AdSense approval for your website is to write and publish more than a dozen of blog posts or articles that contain high-quality content. So what does it mean by high-quality content? Everyone can write content, but not everyone can write high-quality content that meets with the expectation from Google AdSense. Not to mention there are always some people who claim that their content is outstanding, but actually most of them are just a bunch of useless rubbish content. In order to avoid Google AdSense rejecting your website due to content quality issues, I will discuss three topics under the chapter of high-quality content. These three topics are prohibited content, low-value content, and the characteristics and format of high-quality content. Let's start with the first topic now. Any website with the following content is prohibited to show Google served ads on screens. These contents include, but not limited to illegal content, dangerous or derogatory content, sexually explicit content, enabling dishonest behavior such as software hacking or cracking tutorial etc. You may find all of the prohibited content inside Google Publisher Policies under the link inside the description box. Recently, I even found one thread about prohibited content in Google AdSense community. It's a discussion between a person and few AdSense product experts about Google AdSense approval on sexually explicit content website. You may take some time to study their conversation, but don't ever click the website URL here in public because I guess you know the reason. Besides, I'm not sure how someone can say something illogical like this. Based on this person's logic, punching someone may not be a crime because it is not prohibited in the Anti-Corruption Act, for example. As a conclusion, no means no. Google AdSense will never accept any website with prohibited content, especially like this case, to show Google served ads on it. Other than prohibited content, Google AdSense will also reject any website's review application if low-value content error is detected. So what really is low-value content error? I have been targeting the solution of low-value content error for months by writing a few blog posts and creating some YouTube tutorial videos. Because the low-value content issue is not only the hardest Google AdSense issue for anyone to fix, especially for beginners in AdSense, but also there are many websites have been facing this policy violation currently. If you go through numerous posts related to low-value content issue in the Google AdSense community, you will find out that many of these websites wrote the same type of content or niche. As what I have mentioned in this video, low-value contents include, but not limited to content related to general and common technology, news, healthcare, cryptocurrencies, forex, sports, anything with how to or what is, poetry or motivational quotes, online earnings or how to make money, products review and affiliate sites, jobs application website and etc. Let's take this healthcare content website as my first example to discuss low value content issues here. On this homepage, you can see this website provides some healthcare or even medical advice on kidney repair, liver failure and allergies etc. However, the about me page only stated that it will provide the best without providing any information and qualifications of the author. Is the author a doctor? Or is he working in the medical field? Nothing about the author is clarified here, so why should we trust the so-called medical advice from a non-credible website instead of professional medical personnel? Besides, healthcare content belongs to your money your life category. For the sake of protecting all users and advertisers, Google AdSense has been setting up an extremely high-quality barrier on websites that provide content related to YMYL, which include healthcare or financial advice. Therefore, with such an about me page in this example, it is quite impossible for Google AdSense to approve this website with medical advice content due to lack of credibility and trustworthiness. Apart from that, you can spend some time looking at these blog posts titles. Most of them have grammar mistakes, not to mention the grammar mistakes in every medical advice post. It is okay to have some minor grammatical errors, but having such severe mistakes that make your content unreadable is not a good practice from Google AdSense perspective. Therefore, there should be many reasons why Google AdSense didn't approve this website back then, including uncredible healthcare or medical advice, lack of trustworthiness and qualifications to write such content, bunch of grammar mistakes, and also this website redirects users to spam websites without any consent. What I'm going to show you next is a very classic example of low-value content issue, which is a website with content about how to make money, online earnings, or how to earn money at home etc. Normally Google AdSense will mark money making as low-value content without any hesitation. There are many similar contents online when you search for keywords like how to make money on search engines, and their contents are kind of similar and common. These contents always mention how to make money with blogging, YouTube video making, investment, 
trading crypto, teaching tuition, affiliate marketing, online course etc. Since Google is flooded with money-making content online now, why should Google AdSense approve a website containing such common content that can be easily found online? Don't blame anyone because Google AdSense rejects your website with money-making content, this is the natural consequence of your action. Unless you can remove all such low-value content on your website, or else don't really hope your site can be approved by Google AdSense without high-quality content. So what really is high-quality content, and what are the characteristics? A small reminder here, it is a subjective topic, and everyone has a different perspective on the format of high-quality content. You may treat my explanation as one of your references, and I hope it can help you somehow as well. The full explanation of how to write high-quality content will be included in Part 15 of Blogger plus Google AdSense tutorial series, you may check it out once I complete this video. Based on my experience, you should publish many long textual form content with over 800 words per post on your website, and it should be well organized as well. Your high quality content also has to be informative, accurate, original, and unique without severe grammar mistakes. In addition, the use of images between paragraphs is important as well because it enhances your content readability and makes your content more reliable. What I have said just now is not a rigid requirement, you don't have to strictly follow all the characteristics. For example, one of my blog posts was written with around 200 to 300 words, but Google AdSense still approved my blog or website, this is because the other remaining blog posts are high-quality content, or at least they are the acceptable content from AdSense perspective. Besides, I also use some information from other sources or websites as well, but I used some writing techniques such as rephrasing and restructuring all the information collected. By doing so, I not only make my content become so-called unique and original, but also ensure Google AdSense will not reject my website due to low-value content or Google-served ads on screens with replicated content. Here's the three tips you should always remember before Google AdSense approve your site. Never write prohibited content, avoid low-value content, and only write high-quality content. That's all the summary in this chapter. You may watch these two tutorial videos if you want to learn more about high-quality content or low-value content issues. So now you know what is the simple format and few characteristics of high-quality content, how about the minimum number of blog posts you have to write and publish on your website? Many beginners who want to achieve website monetization with Google AdSense might have the same problem in their mind, which is the minimum number of posts required to get approved by Google AdSense. If you check the answers given in different websites, forums, and communities, most of them are quite different. Some YouTube creators claimed that their websites were approved by Google AdSense with just 10 to 12 posts. Meanwhile, some product experts in Google AdSense community said there should be at least 40 to 50 blog posts on a website before applying for Google AdSense. So, which answer should you believe, and how many posts is the minimum number of posts for Google AdSense to approve a website? Reminder here, it is also a subjective matter as well, so just treat it as one of your references. From my perspective, the minimum number of blog posts you should write on your website is between 15 to 20 posts. However, I can't guarantee that your website will be approved by Google AdSense with such number of blog posts. You should try to write at least 15 to 20 posts, the more the better of course, and keep publishing more content while waiting for a reply from AdSense. In my earliest Google AdSense tutorial video, I submitted two review requests to Google AdSense when my website had 5 and 12 blog posts respectively. The first review request was rejected due to valuable inventory, no content error, which was renamed to Google served ads on screens without publisher content issue in October 2021, although all five articles had been indexed before AdSense replied to my request. So five posts were definitely not enough for Google AdSense to approve my website back then. Soon after that, I submitted another review request to Google AdSense after I published seven pre-translated blog posts on my blogger website. When I was waiting for the second reply from Google AdSense, I translated and published another four blog posts on my blogger website, and all these articles were crawled and indexed by Google hours to days after publishing. For days after I submitted a second review request, this no content issue was fixed completely with a total of 16 blog posts on my website. A week later after that, I managed to let Google AdSense approve this website after I fixed another policy violation in the third and last review request. The other two websites not in this tutorial series were approved by Google AdSense with 17 posts and 19 posts respectively. Meanwhile, Viriox has 22 blog posts at the moment Google AdSense approved this website. Based on these Google AdSense approved websites, it doesn't definitely mean that you have to write at least 15 to 20 posts on your blog like me to get Google AdSense approval. But I think that 15 to 20 posts are the safest range of the minimum number of posts you should write to get Google AdSense approval for your website. Apart from that, there are many Google AdSense tutorials on website or YouTube that always tell you to keep publishing more content. But what they didn't tell you is that Google AdSense will not approve your website regardless of how many blog posts you have written if you miss something essential. I saw some websites that wrote more than 20 posts, or even 50 posts, but they were still being rejected by Google AdSense due to some policy violations. 
So do you understand why Google AdSense still could reject your website's review request, even though you have exceeded the minimum number of posts required to publish? Listen carefully here, there are two requirements you have to follow. Or else no matter how many blog posts you have written, you will not be able to fix any policy violations and get Google AdSense approval for your website. The first requirement is that all your blog posts have to be crawled and indexed by Google, which means your contents should appear in Google search results. Besides, the status of your blog posts inside Google Search Console must be submitted and indexed, not any other statuses like discovered currently not indexed, crawled currently not indexed or 5xx server error. As long as your contents are not indexed by Google, your website will be always rejected by Google AdSense due to a policy violation named Google served ads on screens without publisher content. This is why many new websites that have written so many posts, but they are still rejected by Google AdSense, because most of them don't check their blog posts indexing status using Search Console tools. You may refer to these two posts or part 6 video to learn more about article indexing and solution to fix discovered currently not indexed. How I fix this policy violation is shown in part 9 and part 10, and I'm also going to discuss it in a later part. Even though you have written more than 15 to 20 posts on your website and they have been indexed by Google, it is still not enough to help you get Google AdSense approval without accomplishing the second requirement, which is writing high-quality content. I have discussed high-quality content and other relevant topics in the previous chapter already, so I won't say this anymore here. Therefore, the summary of this section is that the minimum number of posts for your website to be eligible for Google AdSense approval is between 15 to 20 posts. Besides, you need to make sure 80% to 90% of these blog posts are not only high-quality content, but they should also be crawled and indexed by Google as well. As I have mentioned just now, when you are writing high-quality content on your website, the use of images and pictures may help your content look more credible and make your content more reader-friendly. Even though you can find many images on Google and download your favorite image, you can't simply use these images on your content because almost all of them are copyrighted. Using a copyright image could cause your website to get rejected by Google AdSense. In the worst situation, your Google AdSense account might be disabled if someone file a DMCA takedown to you. In order to prevent Google AdSense rejecting your website, don't ever download any copyright image online and use it inside your blog posts. Instead, you can find some free non-copyrighted images and clip art you want by typing the keywords with a free word when you are searching online. Besides, some images or video stock websites such as Pixabay, Pexels, Unsplash provide a bunch of free photos which you can freely use as long as you provide some attribution if it is required. In addition, you may create your own images or illustrations if you have some skills to do so using Canva or Photoshop so that you don't have to worry about copyright issues anymore. However, Google AdSense doesn't really care about the images you are using if and only if no one files a DMCA complaint to you. Just make sure your images are relevant to your content, and none of them contains prohibited content, as stated in AdSense publisher policies, then everything shall be fine. Other than the number of posts and copyright issues, I'm going to discuss traffic requirements in the next chapter. Be ready for the following mind-shocking data. Daily traffic is another concern for those who want to apply for Google AdSense on their websites, and there are quite many queries about minimum traffic online. For example, when you search for how much traffic do you need for Google AdSense approval, on Google Chrome, the first result here stated that you should apply for Google AdSense after your website receives at least 100 unique visitors per day. But this is not accurate, because Google AdSense doesn't have any requirement on minimum traffic. No matter if a website has hundreds or thousands of visitors per day, or with merely one to two visitors per day, Google AdSense will evaluate and approve a website fair and square without considering daily traffic. Besides, traffic is not going to affect how Google AdSense assess your website eligibility to display ads, as long as you do not purchase TrafficBot that generates invalid traffic to your website. Some of you are going to question my explanation, but let me answer you with real screen recordings because, well, actions speak louder than words, isn't it? What I show you here is the email Google AdSense sent to inform me that they approve Virioc's blogger website, and this site is ready to show AdSense ads. As at 8.10 pm, this blogger website has 22 published blog posts and 2.15 total views only. Inside Google Search Console, there were only four clicks showing in this performance chart. So do you still think that traffic is really important in getting Google AdSense approval for your website anymore? 30 minutes later, which was at 8.40 pm, I received another reply from Google AdSense, and it informed me that my Japanese blogging website, Oxoroxo, was eligible to display Google Ads as well. Same as what I have done on Blogger Dashboard, this website has 28 blog posts with 79 views only, which was less than 40% of the Virioc Blogger site's total views. A website with so little traffic or views still can be approved by Google AdSense, isn't that mind-blowing? Apart from minimum traffic or total view in Blogger website, you should also take care of the data shown in Google Analytics. There are four main types of traffic channels in Analytics, they are organic search traffic, direct traffic, referral traffic, and social traffic. You need a lot of organic search traffic to keep growing your website and earn from blogging. 
but Google AdSense doesn't really care which type of traffic your website has when they review and approve it. Let me show you the facts again. There were merely 22 users who visited Viriox's blog or website over the last 30 days before Google AdSense approved this site. Organic search traffic contributed 20% only, and it was ranked at third place. Meanwhile, this table showed that most of my visitors were Malaysian, but actually some of them were my visit when I tried to build my website. So the real users who visited my website could be lower than 22 users. However, I haven't set up any Google Analytic account for Oxaroxo Blogger website. But you can guess the total users who visited my website, since Oxaroxo's total views was less than 40% of Viriox's total views. As a summary, apart from invalid traffic, neither daily traffic nor organic traffic is the factor of getting Google AdSense approval for your website, but they do play an important role for you to earn adequate money by blogging while keep growing your website. Let's enter into the next chapter, Google AdSense Rejection. How would you feel if this is the first time you submit a website review request to Google AdSense? Delight, nervous, or relieved? If you are feeling happy about it, I'm sorry to tell you that don't be too happy so soon, because Google AdSense always rejected most of the review requests, and you may be one of them. When the AdSense team complete the review, they will send an email to your Gmail account to inform you about your review status. This is the example of rejection from Google AdSense if your website doesn't meet AdSense program policies. After you receive this rejection reply, don't do something stupid such as taking a screenshot of this message and ask someone inside Facebook group, Quora, or Google AdSense community. Besides, do not quickly submit another review request to Google AdSense without fully understanding what the problem existed on your site. It's totally useless and all you do is wasting your own time. What I'm going to talk about next is a step-by-step -step tutorial to deal with Google AdSense rejection, so watch and learn properly. This email is just a reply that AdSense said they have reviewed your site, but they thought it was not ready to show AdSense ads yet. As stated in here, you have to visit the site's list in your Google AdSense account to determine the exact policy violations found on your website. If your website is rejected by AdSense, the status here will show needs attention inside the AdSense site's list. Press show details under your website, and it should mention one or few policy violations detected by AdSense on your site. However, if your AdSense site's list is not similar to what I'm showing here, or the sidebar is gray out and unclickable, then you might not be able to understand the exact reasons why Google AdSense rejected your website. The suggestion I can give you here is to delete your old AdSense account, especially if the AdSense account you are using was created before 2021, and use a new Google AdSense account to submit another review request to Google AdSense. For example, I created this Google AdSense account at the end of 2019. Regardless of when I submit the review request to Google AdSense, whether it was sent in 2019 or in 2021, this AdSense account homepage remained the same, and it just mentioned there are some policy violations on my website. I couldn't endure this situation anymore back then so I used a new Gmail account to create a Google AdSense account for my blogger website. Then Google AdSense approved my website soon after I submitted my first review request using a new AdSense account. Therefore, sometimes an old AdSense account could be the cause of why Google AdSense didn't approve your website. You may read this tutorial post to learn how to delete your AdSense account permanently. Then you may watch part 8 of this AdSense tutorial series, it's the latest tutorial on how to create a Google AdSense account in 2021 that will show the exact policy violations detected on your website. Before Google AdSense finally approved my Viriox blogger site, it had been rejected by AdSense four times due to numerous policy violations that had been found by them on my website. They detected a total of four policy violations on my site inside these rejections, these violations were, valuable inventory no content, valuable inventory under construction, Google served ads on screens without publisher content, and site behavior navigation issue. By the way, there was a potential low value content issue on my website as well. The full steps-by-steps -steps procedures on how to fix these AdSense policy violations are presented in part 8 to part 11 of this Google AdSense tutorial series. You may check out how I really fix these issues in these videos, but I will only mention the summary of these policy violations here. Valuable inventory no content was renamed to Google served ads on screens without publisher content in October 2021, so both of them are the same. These two tutorials may help you to learn more about no content or without publisher content issue. This issue is due to insufficient blog posts to monetize your website through ads displaying. Even though it mentioned low value content or under construction issue here, they are not the real causes of this policy violation. So how do you fix Google served ads on screens without publisher content issue? All you need to do is make sure you have written at least 15 to 20 blog posts, with more than 80% to 90% of them are high-quality content. Moreover, you have to ensure all your blog posts are being crawled and indexed by Google. They should have a status of submitted and indexed showing in Google Search Console, other status, such as discovered currently not indexed are not acceptable. Apart from the two tutorials just now, no content or without publisher content issues appeared in these three videos. In addition, these two tutorial blog posts may guide you to fix the discovered, currently not indexed issue, and help you to index your blog posts faster. 
The next policy violations I want to talk about are the under construction issue and site behavior navigation issue. From my perspective, these two policy violations are kind of similar to each other, especially in terms of linking. They will be detected by Google AdSense if there is any unfinished setup or broken link on your website, including every single blog post and page. It is also quite easy to fix under construction issue or site behavior navigation issue in Google AdSense. The solution is to run a full and deep inspection on your website by checking it manually or using some online website tool to help you. Then you have to make sure there are no broken links or dead links on your website, while all links will redirect users to the correct web page or site, and lastly, all widgets are functional on your website. That's how I fix these two policy violations that appeared in these Blogger Plus AdSense tutorial videos. Lastly, there was a potential low-value issue on my website because I thought low-value content was recategorized as a policy violation under without publisher content issue. But then I found out that it was not like this because they belong to different policy violations. If your website was rejected by AdSense due to low-value content issue, I can give three tips to fix them. Never write prohibited content, avoid writing low-value content, and only write high-quality content. You may refer back to the chapter of high-quality content to understand the basic structure and format of high-quality content that Google AdSense always looks after on every website. After I explained all the policy violations I encountered, the last two chapters are about time taken to receive a reply from AdSense and difficulties to get Google AdSense approval. The time taken for Google AdSense to review your website is between a few days to two weeks in most of the cases, as I have mentioned in part 12 of this Google AdSense tutorial series. If you have been waiting for more than two to three weeks, but AdSense still didn't reply to your review request, there are many things for you to check from your site. For example, you need to make sure AdSense code is placed correctly on your website, and both ads.txt and robots.txt files have to be functioning as well. For more about pending review issues and time taken for AdSense to review a website, you may watch back part 12 of this tutorial series. Before I enter into the ending, I would like to talk about something a bit controversial, which is the difficulty to get Google AdSense approval for your website. I can say almost all the online users in Quora, Reddit, or even Google AdSense community said that it is much harder to get Google AdSense approval now. It is true in some contexts, especially when Google AdSense keeps updating their policies and regulations. Even many AdSense product experts said so too, but I have a different opinion. From my perspective, it is really easy to get Google AdSense approval for any website, even a new website that is just less than one month old. Let's take the Pokemon game as the final reference in this video. Basically getting Google AdSense approval is like challenging the Elite Four and the Champion, the strongest trainers or challengers in the game. If you are new to this game or never exposed to some key information previously, you could fail to challenge them in the first few tries. However, once you manage to beat the Elite Four and the Champion, you will find out how easy it is to win over them repeatedly after the game. The first success is to finish the game, the other attempt is to earn money in the game. If you can't interpret what I mean here, it's like even though the difficulties for every website to get Google AdSense approval are the same, it will be relatively harder for rookies to make Google AdSense approve their website due to lack of experience. Besides, Google AdSense already lowers some barriers and restrictions that ease the burden that benefits Google AdSense users. For example, AdSense already removed three ads per post limitation, sticky ads restriction, and six months old website age restriction over the past few years. Not to mention blogger websites don't have to be eligible first before you can sign up for a Google AdSense account in the second half of the year 2020, and you can create a completely functional Google AdSense account in 2021. Moreover, there are tons of Google AdSense tutorial articles and videos on YouTube and Google where you can learn from others' mistakes and successes. You are living in a good era to get Google AdSense approval for your website, so it's your problem if your website is not approved by Google AdSense. Last but not least, it is really easy to get Google AdSense approval, as long as you stay in the only correct path when you are developing your website, which is to keep publishing high-quality content. That's all I want to share in this Google AdSense tutorial video. Feel free to ask me in the comment section if you have some problems in getting Google AdSense approval for a website, especially when you have been stuck in some policy violations for a few times already. I will reply to you as best as possible, so if you want some free advice, just leave a comment at the bottom of this video. By the way, once my YouTube channel has 1000 subscribers and reaches 4000 hours of watch time, I will pick one subscriber of this YouTube channel and award you something. If you are the lucky one, I will help you to get Google AdSense approval free. Just make sure you click the subscribe button, leave a like and comment in any Google AdSense related video to be eligible for this lucky draw. I also leave few hidden clues for you to find in this video, you may contact me once you manage to find them and they will increase your chance to get this free AdSense approval service. The next video, which is part 14, will be a Google AdSense tutorial on setting up auto ads and manual ads. 
I will also share a few writing skills to publish high-quality content in part 15 of this Blogger Google AdSense tutorial series. Click the watch list on your left to watch the next part of BAT series, or click the watch list on your right to learn more about Google AdSense and the ways to fix AdSense policy violations. Goodbye and have a nice day.